Hello YouTubians. I finally get to share with you my uh, John Bedini replication of his um, simplified schoolgirl monopole system. Uh, basically it's a fairly simple circuit that looks a little like this. And for people um, electronically challenged uh, don't worry about it, it looks intimidating, uh, but this is the first circuit I have ever built. Now, this is a good shot of the system itself. You can see the black and red is a primary coming into the system. White and yellow is the secondary coming out. You've got the transistor. Transistor, variable resistor, there's a resistor here. A small lamp, neon bulb, couple of diodes, and a coil basically. Now I'll show you the construction of the wheel. Hold on. There it is. There's uh, small magnets that I use. Uh, God knows what size they are, but I didn't really care. I bought whatever was available. They fit it perfectly into the wheel. I used two in them in series like that and spacing I didn't really care I just spaced them out evenly uh, it doesn't really matter as far as I understand alright so a uh, couple of things I wanted to show you and confirm about that mortar one of them is no back EMF what no back EMF means the more mechanical energy you take out of the mortar the less it consumes exactly the opposite of our conventional ones hopefully now you'll be able to see it now it's on uh, milliamps at the moment we get the black one here yeah. and the red one here alright let's see if you can hopefully you can see the numbers it's at 141 and it's going to be climbing up a little bit because um, I've just stopped the wheel and it's just accelerating so it's on 146 already and that's in milliamps okay so once we get to 150 I would like to take some energy out of them the wheel and see what happens so we are at 150 now so I'm just gonna push my hand against the wheel and just take some energy out of it and as you can see with a bit of luck the consumption rate is going down 120 milliamps, 115, 100 basically it makes sense in a way of the wheel spins slower it should consume less regardless of how much energy you take out of it the reason the conventional motors consume more because they have what's called back EMF back EMF is when um, you reduce the generation of electricity to the opposite of what you're actually pumping in so it can pump in more electricity that's why conventional engines if you just try and slow them down they'll pump more electricity through and um, basically what we're trying to do is eliminate that um, another point I wanted to illustrate is uh, oh, here we go I want to test the voltage I mean, crystal resistance generally when I just have the machine working just as a charger I uh, keep it on a, uh, on a highest resistance consuming the least and can just run forever basically <laughs> not forever because it only recovers about 95% of the energy so um, yes it's got some sort of a loss but we're not considering the mechanical energy that you can actually harness so what I want to show now is the voltage. These are 12 volt batteries and I want to show you how much volts this this system spits out basically for that battery. Because it charges up the battery, the secondary one. Having a play with this machine, what I found out is this is DC. When I switch it to AC, I've got 27 volts here. So an idea comes up 
Well, if I've got AC coming out, why not put a uh, bridge rectifier, get the uh, DC out of it, and charge the battery with DC because that's what it accepts. Okay, let's attempt doing that. Small, normal, standard bridge rectifier. Okay, so now the electricity that comes out of the machine have to go through a rectifier and hopefully change it to from AC to DC. So let's test the output now. And the output went up a bit. 15, 14. By the way, if I switch it to AC, I still got 27 volts AC. God knows how does AC go through the rectifier and, and just remains as AC. You probably know better than me, but it's just an idea just to uh, to get you up and researching. So, but DC is still higher than what it was without the rectifier. So, after testing it. I found that if you put that rectifier on, it works a hell of a lot better. So without the rectifier, it, it recovers about 80 to 85 percent with this system uh, of uh, energy going out. Once I put the rectifier, it gone up to about 95. Um, it really barely uses anything. And when I say barely, I generally switch the batteries every 12 hours and um, I've got it all documented basically on uh, how, how it charges and discharges and it's gone down to let's say primary 1255, secondary 1232 and it, the 1232 gone up to 1250 whilst discharging this one to 1232 so basically all it had is 5 millivolts of energy was used and not recovered. So um, I'm not sure how accurate it is but it seems to me that it recovers the vast majority of the voltage. Once again we do not even consider the fact that you can take mechanical energy, it's performing work right now, it's moving air, you can actually feel feel it moving air a little bit, you can hear the metal friction on metal, this is a, just the bearings and it's a very old wheel, so um, quite noisy, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but um, there is definitely work being performed here, you can definitely take a little bit out of it as well, I had originally, I had a big um, MDF board circulating with magnets on it because I wanted to harness the energy with the magnet circulation but I just didn't have time to muck around with it. Another point that I wanted to, uh, to, um, to tell you is John Bedini claims that once you recharge your battery with this particular circuit they, uh, they um, accept conventional charge uh, much quicker than uh, than just the batteries that uh, that never been through that circuit and uh, after a lot and lot of testing I'm here to tell you that it is correct those six batteries on the left I bought them together with the batteries on the right the two batteries on the right um, from the same box and on the same day basically the ones on the right never been through the bedini the ones on the left have been the ones on the right it takes me about two days of trickle charge them and they go up to about 12.61 and 12.66 volts the ones on the left takes about an hour to two hours with the same conventional charger here's a quick shot of it just a normal car battery charger 12 volts takes me about an hour to two hours tops to charge the ones that been through Bedini circuit not only that it goes up to about 12.93, 12.99 and 13 volts and it stays there for a hell of a lot longer than the ones that haven't been through. It's very cheap batteries so um, I bought them for 10 bucks each. I wasn't expecting much from them but the ones that go through the Bedini um, seem to be working a hell of a lot better. And that's it. Um, I'll leave you with that. 
tune in for some more videos I'm gonna be doing some hydrogen stuff and some cool alternative energy things um, I'll see you next time bye